as a coach and you asking me something, if I don't know it, I'm going to point blank tell you, I don't, don't know, know it. it. That's right. <laughs> but I'm going to go get the answer, the answer. and I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> That's right. Now, when I come back with that answer, now I know too. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad about telling you I don't know. And I don't care how you think of me when I told you I don't know. Right. I went and got the answer for you. Because when you came to me, you didn't know. Now you know. Now both of us are smart. <laughs> Here we go. Check the ego at the door. Yeah, That's both right. of us are smart. Check, your ego Check the, at the ego door. at the door. I don't worry about that type of stuff. Come on, man. And I told my coaches, stay in your lane. We ain't got no lane. We got no lane. None of us got lane. The only person got a lane here is me. Because <laughs> I'm a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only person got a lane here. But you guys, y'all don't have a lane. Table ready for oh, us. Man, you Come already in know. <laughs> man, that's, that's toasty, man. No, that's toasty. Cheers, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good yes, sir. Good Congratulations, people. you two. Yeah, thank, thank you. That's both you guys. So yeah. happy for you, as you know, Wash. Man. Seeing you get that manager's role, that manager's What is that, job. some generic cranberry juice? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. I'm man, not with the budget. You. I'm not with the budget. I told you not to add anything. Is there such a thing as fresh squeezed cranberry juice? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, that whoa. stuff is cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh so, man. No, it's, it's nice to be. I'm glad I was able to do it. Yeah. Um, just as you wrote me and told me about, uh, I mean, t text me and told me how the schedule was, and when you was leaving, my schedule got tough. Right. I bet. Yeah. And I'm glad you called. And I said, I got to get over there. I got to get over there. Pete called him. I got to go. I got to go. Well, you're the perfect person that we wanted to get on the show because, I mean, what we've, what we've experienced is, is we're talking about stuff that needs to be talked about. We're talking about issues that need to be talked about because it doesn't get talked about a lot. And it's just a different, different, different uh, experience, a different setup, a different, different experience for you guys. Hopefully you get more comfortable getting to talk about shit that, you, you know, we talk about all the time. But... People need to hear it, and it's uh, it's important that we send a message out there. As long as you don't get too technical when you talk about baseball, you I'm in. No, I'm not going to. You've been, around, you've been around this game too long for me to try to stump you with anything, I'm man. in. I'm well, in. Well, mate, you can get technical with me. I'm not the manager. Fair enough. And, and, Fair enough. and plus, he got an education at Rutgers. You know. Yeah. Hey, we got some Rutgers people out what? here. What? Uh, so my I education know, was high level. school only. Same. Yeah, mine's with high school only. We're, we're on the same side for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Yeah. We're high school only over this yeah. side. Yeah. 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 Well, just to let you all fellas know, Ron Wash, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I think you know this, and same as you, EY, congratulations to you guys as well with, with LA. And yeah. as a former player now, kind of transitioning into this world, I think everybody in the industry, we knew it was Ron Wash needs to be a manager at some point in time. So congratulations to you for getting that position and, and, and being back in that seat like you deserve. So kind of what I'm getting into now in this new playing days are over transition of life is, you know, I'm trying to reach, we're all trying to reach a certain group of guys, a certain group of kids and in the information era, in a day and age where everything is so individualized, how can we get back to, you know, using that stuff to help us, but at the same time, how can we get back to being good teammates? How can we get back to doing the same thing as, as, you were in the playing days as you were in the playing days because it's just a feel now that there's a lot of individual stuff going on but how do we get back to that team way so two ogs like yourself to come back in here and get on with us is is going to be something we can't wait to talk to y'all about we're trying to get back to team ways because that's the only way you can be successful um no one person is going to be able to do anything in baseball by themselves i don't care how good you are you need the scrubs mm -hmm. you do you need the scrubs they make the superstar look good. Yeah. And because if it was just a superstar, uh, for an example, Shotani and Mike Trout, you know, they were superstars. But for some reason, uh, the followers couldn't reach their height. And great superstars bring everybody with them. They really do. They bring everybody with them. They don't leave nobody behind. And in today's game, as you just mentioned, it has come too individualized. It's me, me, me. I, 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 there's no we, there's no us. And I think those dollar bills have done that. Yeah. I don't begrudge them. 
Sure. You know, because I wish I was in this generation yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. We all do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But uh, so guys like me, guys like EY, when we meet these young kids, we try to give them the real in the game of baseball. How you go about your business, how you prepare, how you be a tremendous teammate. Those are the things you have to do. How you respect the game. Where, where did this friendship start? Where did this, because you guys, from my time in Atlanta, it's... Wash and EY, it's Wash and EY, it's Wash and EY. It's well, like you guys are. I, you I guys met are EY when he was a, long, a young little punk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was coaching in the very first uh, Arizona Fall League, yeah. the very first one, Sun City. And um, he was with the Dodgers. Jerry, Jerry Royster was the manager. The Dodgers brought him down because he was going to uh, Mexico. Mexico. Went ball. And uh, Jerry Royster wouldn't let me put my hands on him. Because he was supposed to be in something special. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's how we met. That's the first time I met him. And then when I was coaching in Oakland, uh, he was playing at the time. Because when he was playing, I was coaching. I didn't play at the same time he played. And um, I was in L.A. with the Braves one, one time. And his son was playing with the, with the Anaheim Angels. There was the Anaheim Angels at the time. And um, he shot up there and I was telling him, I had just joined Atlanta. I said, man, what you doing? He said, I ain't doing nothing. I said, we need you, man. We got, I got some young kids in Atlanta that could use you, use your expertise, you know what I'm saying? So we made some phone calls and um, there he was, you know. That's, that's how it happened. And, uh... There was plenty of times, man. I remember in Atlanta being on first base and you would look across that diamond and say, hey, that, that dude right there, I, we can edit this stuff out, but you're like, hey, that motherfucker right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why hey, yeah. that mo he, holds, he holds me accountable each and every day. Yeah. He's the reason why I'm, I got this pep in my step like I do. And one thing that, that I admire about you guys, like we said, when you walked in here, some OGs in the game and, you know, having to be done with my playing career now and looking back when I was a rookie, the game was in a different spot than what it is now. And there's, there's, a, there's some absolutes, like you're saying, as a manager that you have to have. But in a game that has changed so much to other people and there's, there's adaptability with more information and all that type of stuff, how have you guys been able to adapt in, in all these different type of generations in, in the game and, and information and all that stuff? So how do you... How do you explain that? You want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first because I know you're going to top it. So I said, let me go first. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I hey, said, Rob Watts couldn't <laughs> wait to answer yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let him top it, so I'm going to start it off. Uh, I, I think it, it became a situation for me, individually as a coach, that uh, I had to grow and adapt. And when I got with Wash, I was able to get with a, a team that was young, energetic, but didn't really know their potential. And once we got together, I said the first thing I said, you know what? I'm gonna get them to think outside the box. They don't know exactly what they can do and what type of skills they really can take to a higher level. So I said, I'm gonna push them. And, and that's what we did every day. Every morning we would sit down in the, in the dugout about 6.30, 7 o'clock and uh, discuss our game plan for the day. And we would attack, you know, in that, in that manner. And the guys just fed off that. I mean, it was fortunate for us and for me to get into an environment and situation when I got with Atlanta next to Wash because I was able to really pick his brain a lot. So my progression and my growth as a coach went to another level. And I was constantly trying to get better and bringing things to his attention, you know, being an ex-manager and everything. So I wanted to pick his brains and, and find out exactly what I was walking into with the players. They didn't know me and I didn't know them. So uh, I think when you talk about adapting to young players, the young players today want to be taught. They want to be taught. You know, you get those that think they know it all and you give them a chance to express themselves and to express what they know and you find out they don't know Diddly squat. <laughs> yeah. Or you give them a chance to fail, right? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, and, and that matter too. So yeah. they, you know, our, we got a thing that we talk about together and everything. If you're listening, you're learning. If you're learning, you're listening. So we weren't looking for anybody to tell us exactly what we want to do. We knew exactly how we want to attack them, but we had to give them a chance 
to present themselves and to accept them for who they are and what they know. And then eventually we would give our knowledge on to them as well. And then it was just a, it was a great, it was a great marriage. And that situation with Atlanta when we came there, when I came in 18. So uh, I, I just think with the players today, they want to be taught, but they have to be willing to empty their cup and allow more information and knowledge to go in that cup. And when you find one that doesn't want to empty his cup, that's all right. It's just a matter of time. You still have to work. You still have to press. Coaching one-on-one, don't assume they know anything. And that's what I've been able to learn. I can't top that. I learned from the teacher. You know, when I first joined Atlanta, um, I arrived with a reputation. You know, and but also a lot are, arrive with a lot of character, and you know they've got this uh, motivational speaker out there. I can't think of his name right now. He say your character, you bring every day. Your reputation, you bring occasionally. You see what I'm saying? But all I had was a reputation. I had skins. I wasn't some coach that was a first timer. Hold on, hold on. Tell them what skins are now. I think he knows, but you need to just Skins bring it out. Is, I got gold gloves and patent gloves under my watch. Mm -hmm. Many of them, you know, um, under my watch. My expertise is in infield play. My expertise is in the game of baseball, period. I'm not a jack. You know, you know what a jack is? You're going to tell me. That's yeah. right. <laughs> tell them what a jack is. A jack is, is a, it's a person that knows a little bit about everything but has no expertise in nothing. Well, I got expertise in a lot of parts of the game. And when I went there, Ozzy Albers was the first guy I met. And you ain't gonna believe how I met him. When I walked in the clubhouse, they told me, man, you're gonna love this kid, Ozzy Albers. Say, where is he? See, he's on the backfield. So I got in the court, went on the backfield. A trainer was back there working with him. A trainer. <laughs> On the baseball field? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I got off the court. I walked over to the trainer. I introduced myself. My name is Ron Washington. I'm the infield coach. Do you mind if I take over? He said, sure. So I grabbed a towel. I walked over to Ozzy at second base. I put the towel on the ground. Nah. Nice. Don't you tell him what you said to Okay. Him. All right. Okay. No, please tell it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lady in now. Yeah, we got a lady in now. No, you don't say that now. Change it. So I put the towel down and I said, uh, <laughs> you will be beholden to me for the rest of your life. But that's not what I said. I can't say what I said because you got a lady sitting there. And he looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, no, no. Literally, bro. You hurt. You can't do anything, you and I are gonna be stuck by the hip. And when I finish with you, you literally want to, gonna wanna do what I just told you you was gonna do. And that's how I introduced myself in. Dansby Swanson was there from Vanderbilt. Yeah. Guys from Vanderbilt and Stanford, smart as anybody on earth. Yes. yes. Just ask them. Absolutely. So Dansby was one of those kids that he always tried to brain you. You know what I'm saying? But what he realized, he couldn't brainwash because I'll forget more baseball than he'll ever know. And he didn't buy in right away. Mm -hmm. But when he saw what Ozzy was doing and how he was moving forward and how Raleigh was buying in and moving forward, one week he walked on the field, he said, you gonna work with me? If you want to, I don't force myself on nobody. Mm -hmm. So that's, so, so Sua, Justin Sua was, he's been with the Rays for a while. He's a process and development coach. So. It's, as you can get into at some point right now after this, but what you always say is, I don't go up to the player and, and try and bring stuff up on you. I let you come to me and let the player, and I'll let you get into all yeah, that stuff, but it, it's kind of aligning to what you're talking about. It's amazing to hear what you guys do and just how you connect with players. And on the other side of the, dug, on the, other side of the field, hearing players talk about you who you've never coached. You guys have never coached these guys, but like you said, the reputation that word gets around and there's so much respect for, for what you two do. The question I have, Wash, is you have been a coach, you've been a manager, you've done so much to go into a new team. We talk about going to new organizations all the time here. I'm going from Royals to, Can I'm sorry, yeah, from Kansas City to San Diego, San Diego to Chicago, Red Sox, and going team to team as a player. 
And then you're doing it as a coach. But to do it as a manager, to go into a new organization as a first year manager, to shape the culture and to shape the narrative, the vision, what's your process with that? Leadership, you can't be afraid to lead. You gotta lead. Now, you can't force people to follow you, but when your program is starting to get into place, they don't have no choice but to follow because I'm gonna make it clear, you on board or you off, bottom line. And if all 25 of y'all wanna leave, step out and I'll bring in 25 more. And if that means they're all 18, 19 years old, I don't look scared. I'm gonna teach them how to play baseball. Because when I was 18, 19 year old, a guy like me taught me how to play baseball. That's where I learned it. I started my baseball career at a baseball school. We went to the chalkboard, chalked up everything on the chalkboard, then took it out to the field. Really? Yes. When I was 16 years old, I knew everything every player had to do on the field. I signed as a catcher. So I'm involved in everything. We would go out on the field and run cutoffs and relays, and if they did it wrong, we stop everything, set everybody up. And then once we set everybody in the right position, now we put them back in the position they play, and we hit the ball again. That's what we did. So that's how I learned my baseball. And um, till today, that's the way I approach things. I've always set up a situation that gives these kids today a visual. They react to visuals. They just don't react to you talking about something. But if you put something in front of their face and show them how something is done, they react to that. And, they, and the thing about it, you always have to answer their questions. Always. There's no question you can ask me, even though I see you trying to be an a-hole. I'm gonna answer <laughs> it. But I answer it because as he said earlier, the more you let them talk in the business today, the more you find out about what they do not know, not about what they know. I already know what you know by looking at you. My interest is what you don't know, that way I know what I gotta feed you. And I know how I gotta feed you through developing the relationship. Just real quick. Go, go. The, I've noticed that it feels like that part of the game at a minor league level has, has at least diminished a little bit. Uh, guys are getting to the big leagues now. Back in the day, it was more of a, you have to prove yourself the ability to field your position. You have to be able to throw to bases, hold runners. The tangible parts of the game and the tangible parts of, of whether it's pitching or hitting, there's still a lot of teaching going on at the big league level now, which was never done. It was always, you had to prove yourself before you got there. Well, wherever I've been, have been teaching. Wherever I've been and looked on the other side, there ain't been no teaching. It's been fake stuff because they're not consistent. You know, it's just been mirrors. Checking boxes. Yeah, it's all checking boxes. But other than that, um, I've seen very few places where there's real teaching. And it's just consistency, like you said, like in our sport, you gotta be consistent in the routine and which the, the ground ball is a towel out there. It's, it's iconic in baseball now. That's something that, that you've started. But and it's structured. Yeah. Every day they come to the yard, they have to be some reason that they're walking that door that something needs to happen. You see what I'm saying? Not walk in the door and have to wait for somebody to tell you what's gonna happen. The structure has to already be there. When you walk in the door, you know something is happening. And when you walk in the door, there will be some way to hold you accountable for what's about to happen. And you knew that last night when that game ended, what tomorrow was going to look like and be like. Pray yourself. Yeah, and it was every day. It was ongoing. It was nonstop. There was no reason to be tired. There was no reason to make excuses. There was no reason not to do something. And if you got that kind of thing mixed going on, what you got? You got accountability around the whole room. So you hold me accountable for what I have to do. I hold him accountable for what he have to do. He hold you accountable for what you have to do. And now everyone is holding everybody accountable so nobody can, can, can let up. 
earlier, for, uh, for five years, I was a high school teacher. And so you go through this teaching on how to educate and how to teach the, these young minds. And I learned an acronym when I was going through, t- when teaching, the, the keys to be a, a, an effective teacher. And as you're talking, as both of you are talking, you're checking every single box. So it's an, it's an acronym, EPIC, E-P-I-C. They say the most effective teachers do these four things. Number one, the E stands for experiential. They provide an experience for the players to learn. Give, show them, let them experience it. P stands for participatory. You want the player to participate in the problem solving. You want to hear them. You want them to talk about it. Let's go through it together. I is image rich. It means you want the image. They want to see it on the board. They write it, show them. And then the C is the connection. You connect to them. You connect them to their wide. You connect them to each other. And as I'm listening to you talk, I'm like, wow, these We're are these are babe. epic coaches. Yes. Epic. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. You never put it together like that. Yeah. I'm gonna steal but it. That is it's yours. Yeah, it's yours. Yeah, it's, yours. Like it's, yours. it's yours now. Oh, that is the thought process. Yeah, epic. See what I'm saying? That is the thought process. I only got a high school education, and um, but that is the process. And exactly what you said, I've been doing for. 50 years, even when I was a player, I was doing that. When I was a player, my teammates came to me for advice and for information. Because the first time I left home, I landed in Sarasota, Florida. The coach at the baseball academy, it was about 14 or 15 of us. And he said, you guys got one foot on the ground and one foot on one step of the airplane. And this guy from Detroit said, what is he talking about? He said, if your game is you gonna go home. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. I say my game ain't shitty, dog. <laughs> he ain't talking to me, dog. <laughs> when I say my game is not shitty and he's not talking to me, nobody echoed the same thing. Nobody echoed the same thing. I say he ain't talking to me. And I was the only one said it. You think the guy next to, to me would have said, he ain't talking to me? And then we could have got that around the whole thing. But I was the only one say, he ain't talking to me. He must be talking to you some. He ain't talking to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know my what, game uh, is tight. You know what hit home to what you just said too is is when they asked you, you know, here in LA now and and how do you start that winning culture? And and I need people in the building to know what winning looks like. So they know what winning looks like. So when people come in here, they know how we operate. Yeah. In my Kansas City days in 14 and 15, when when we went to the postseason and you know, we shared the same complex as Texas, so we guys we got to have a firsthand view of how you guys did it over there and got to see how that was. But we got Raul Abanez at, at the deadline in 14, and it was the same thing. This guy's 41 years old, and he's coming up to me and BP just being like, Haas, man, hey, you know, I see the style of play. I see how you guys are going. Give me, give me the ins and outs of what goes on here and all that type of stuff. So he recognized at 41 years old and, and X-plus years in the big leagues, hey, listen, like, I need to buy into what's going on here. It's not about me, it's the team. Right. So that's what's so refreshing to hear. And like step one with, with the Angels, step one is what? Getting the right people in the building and then go no, from there? Step one is I have to accept the people in the building. And step one also is I have to start deciding for myself who's gonna fit what I'm trying to do. And after I decide for myself who's gonna fit what I'm trying to do, I get with the general manager. And I start letting him know on my own because they're going to tell you what this guy can do, what that guy can do, what this guy can do, what that guy can do. And I said, okay, I, I got what you're saying, but I'm going to try. I'm going to see that for myself. And then I come back and tell you, this guy you say can do that, bad apple. This guy you say can do that, bad apple. Now, all I want you to do is watch the way you go about his business, how we interact with people. And what I just told you, it's gonna give you a picture. And he looking and he looking and he said, you was right, Wash. It's not about being right. Those are the kind of people that's not gonna be a part of what we're trying to do. And we need to get them out of here now because their influence is too powerful for the rest of them. Their influence is too powerful for the rest of them. Their influence is powerful in me, but I need the rest of those guys. I don't need those two. We get them out of there, we can build what they are. You see what I'm saying? They, they done play it out. We can build that and we can build it better. How have you, and both of you guys, you guys have been in the game for so long now and, and I had you know, my little time in the game and, and towards the end, 
you know, I felt like a little bit of the patience was kind of running out a little bit because, you know, I'm seeing a dude that I've been, I mean, <laughs> going to sleep good at night knowing I'm facing you the next day. And now this motherfucker's coming in here trying to run our pitching staff or run the way we call a game. So, like, for me, the most part was I hated the disrespect in a way of some young guys, some analytical guys coming into a clubhouse and presenting information towards some of the OGs, the people that have, have been around this game for a long time. So for me, it found me like in, in, a, in, a, in a mad space. And how are you guys, like I said, you've, you've been through this, you know, four or five different times now where the game has different trends and different trades. How do you maintain that patience? And like what you just said with the, about your situation, you took it as an opportunity to teach him as well. Like, how do you have that patience? Because the, the problem that you just talked about, that goes to the guy who's in charge. See what I'm saying? I ain't calling no names, I'm not blaming anybody. But the guy that's in charge has to get the communication from the analytical people that's causing the frustration that you guys are having. And he's got to get in the middle of that and keep it off of y'all. Keep it off of y'all. <laughs> keep it off of y'all. You see what I'm saying? That's right, for the play. And you do that through communication. Right. You the analytical people, I'm the field general. Anything you want to bring down here, you come down here, we sit down, we talk about it. You the smartest at what you do, and I'm the smartest at what I do. But for us to make this work, you have to teach me what you know, and I will teach you what I know. Because I know baseball, and you don't. I don't know analytics, but you do. So if we can marriage, we can get along. But if you're gonna come down here because you got a degree and try to tell me what to do, that's when you're gonna butt heads. See what I'm saying? It's a collaboration. I walked in here and my first two weeks on the job, all I did was get with those people that make the decision and taught them how to communicate with me and my people down below. I taught them how to communicate. One time in, in Atlanta, they wanted to come down and they wanted to try to start some, some new um, setups as far as what goes on on the field. And Alex Antopoulos said, this is what we want to do, but we'll, 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 we'll wait about two weeks before we try to implement it. What did I do? Implement it that night. I said, why? We're a major league team. Why we got to wait two weeks to do this? Let's implement it tonight and we can get the kinks out in a few days. Why are we going to wait two weeks? And he said, you can do that. We're a major league team. We can do anything <laughs> we want to do. And guess what we did? We implemented that night. Pittsburgh took advantage of it. We made some adjustments the next night. We made some adjustments the next night. And in four or five days, it was rock solid. That's the way to go in this, in this game, too, is, is trusting something over the long haul, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the day-to-day. -day, it's so easy to, like, let results dictate one thing yeah. or another. But when you trust it over the long haul, that's when you got something But when special. your leader is not in tune with the people that make higher decisions than him, it's going to be conflict like you talked about. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But the leader has to take the lead and make this work because all I want you to do is play. I don't want you worried about nothing else but playing. That's it. This stuff, let me handle it. And I handle it. And those conversations aren't always good. Sometimes they, man, they some loud ones. But <laughs> when we finish, what we have? This, a decision. We have a solution. A solution. We have a solution. Sometimes you can get in five minutes. Sometimes you can get in 10. Sometimes you can get in 30. Sometimes you can get an hour. Sometimes you can get in five days. Sometimes it take a month. But whatever amount of time it takes, we gonna stand here and get it done until we get a solution. And then when we get a solution, everybody can focus on their job. I don't want you focusing on no stuff like that. If I try to get you to do something that they have brought down and you got a question about it, they supposed to hear your question. They're not supposed to throw your question away because you the one going out there and applying it. So if you got a question, I'm supposed to give you all in, listen to your question. And I'm supposed to let you know why I'm doing this make you understand why I'm doing this. So then when I make my decision, you was included. And all you wanna do is be included. 
This decision may not happen the way I want it to happen, but I had an opinion and I was included. So I don't care what the results is now because I know I'm not the one making the decision. And I got all my boys on board. When we go up in here, speak your peace. If you don't speak your peace, you don't have nothing to complain about. See what I'm saying? Don't go up in there and clam up. Go up in there and speak your peace. And those guys on that side of the table, they're going to listen. But then after they listen to you, I want you to sit on your side of the table and intently listen to them. See why you clam up in there or no? You, you, what you got? No, no, no. no. I, I, I learned <laughs> to speak my mind. But from a coach standpoint, when you're dealing with the analytics and you're trying to make sure the player understand what's going on. See, sometimes players get so clammed up when they think about analytics and they're trying to do this and doing that. But a coach is that is that buffer. You know what I'm saying? He's the manager. He's got a lot on his plate. So if he gets it from, from upstairs, you know, he's going to come to his coach who's supposed to be an expert in what he does. And it's our job to decipher that information and give it to the player in terms that they will understand and still excel at what they do best out there on the baseball field rather than trying to be an analytical person because then they become an analytical player. They become a robot. They become a robot. And that's one thing, you know, that worked well in Atlanta and as well is going to work well here because we're able to communicate uh, with the guys upstairs. We're on the same page. We want great results. That's the bottom line. You want great results. So it's up to us to take that information because we all as coaches get a lot of information. I can't come to you as a player and give you all that information, but I'm going to give you the main Apply ingredients. As needed. That's right. That's it. And you let the analytical people know, I got 18 more things, but they, they're not ready to be right. applied yet. They're not ready. But the other seven out of that 18, we can apply. Now, we're going to hold this because at some point, we're going to have to come back over here, call this our warehouse. We're going to have to come back to this warehouse and start plucking some stuff out of there that will apply now that we have arrived there. And then there's going to be some left that's not ready to be applied yet. You see what I'm saying? And then you make them feel good about what they're doing. You give them credit for what they know. You give them credit for what they're experts at. And I demand you give me credit what I'm an expert at. Nothing that can happen, we can't sit down and talk about. It. Nothing. Well, what I really like about this, and particularly what both of you are saying, but you said something really interesting, EY, uh, being the, the person who passes information on to the players, I, I think that in order to truly teach something simply, you need to understand it deeply. Yes. And here you are understanding the nuances, the complexities, the, the analytics, so that to understand it deeply so that you can go to the players and teach it so simply in their language. And as I'm sitting here listening to you, Wash, first of all, ready to run through a wall. Like just <laughs> yeah. fire, I, we all are all the time. Fired <laughs> up, just, like, just amazing. As a coach, as a member of Wash's coaching staff, he has set the standard. There is a standard, there is a vision, it is clear. He is gonna say it every day. There's, there's he's not mincing words. What is your role and the rest of the coach's staff's role under a leader like this? To make sure I maintain and spread what he's trying to deliver and his message that he gives to all of us as coaches, number one, and to the players. So in a sense that he'll say something and that message has to be also uh, a strong message for the players. So in order for who's in contact with the players all the time? The coaches. So that's something like when talking to him for six years, these last six years, every day about baseball, you know, I know his message. Making this transition with him was easy, is easy, because I know exactly what to expect from him. And so it's my job as a coach to come with that same energy, that same passion, and deliver the same message so there's no miscommunication in the process. And I think when you gather your coaching staff, they have to understand, first of all, the leader's message and then be able to deliver it in a tone that each player is account made accountable and understand what the message is. When you talk about that communication thing with the analysts, I'm going to go back to that right quick. Um, we had a thing about positioning. 
So I asked the guy, I said, okay, how do you come up with this positioning? So I wanted to understand before I go out there and deliver to the players, you have to play here, you have to play here, you got to play there. Okay. The question would come probably why, and I want to know why. So the analytic guy sat me down and explained exactly how they came up with, it pretty much taught me the formula. So when I sat down, he would ask me, okay, tell me based on your baseball experience, okay, what do you think? And we sat down to talk for about an hour or two hours and then we started meeting before each series to go over that. So when I went to the players, you were I was well able versed. to explain yeah. to them, it's like, okay, you understand now. And guys and players are able to go out there and play better when they understand why I'm playing in this position, why I'm playing here, why I'm playing that. And it gets to a point, okay, I don't want to be a babysitter and have to watch you the whole night because I have other things I'm looking at. If you're going to be in your spot, play the spot, but understand, especially when it get late in the game, there's going to be situations and pitchers on that mound that pitch differently than what this wreck is saying. That's when your baseball experience and knowledge comes into play. Mm. And, and that's what made things work the way they did in Atlanta. You know, players, we had players that asked the question why, and they wanted to know. And, and that's okay, because like why I said, we have the answer. And I wanted to make sure I had the answer. You have coaches rebelling with this analytics. Why are they doing this? They do no, 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 no. That's the leader. The leader said, this is what we are gonna do. It's coming from upstairs. We gonna do it. And it's our job as coaches to make sure that they understand and apply it and be the best player they could be and not get frustrated with not understanding or trying to figure out what's going on upstairs. If you want to know exactly what's going upstairs, go upstairs. And we tell them that. Yeah. Go upstairs. And we can bring them down here. That's right. Put you in the room. Put you in the room. <laughs> you, can see, you can see the teams that do struggle and you can see the teams that do have a disconnect between the coaching staff and the front office or not, not a disconnect, but some tension at tension, least. Yes. It yes. doesn't, it just doesn't work. You've yeah. got to be, you've got to all be on the same page. Otherwise it's just pointless. You're never going to do anything with any kind of value. I hire you as my pitching guy. I tell you, that's your baby. Now, you do what you have to do with it. I'm only coming to you when I got questions. And when I come to you with a question, I want an answer. Yeah. You might be my hitting coach. You make a comment about pitching. Pete get upset. I don't have that. Pete is my pitching coach. You make a comment as the hitting coach about pitching, it's up to Pete to listen to what you're saying and see if he can apply it to what he's doing or see if you're right. You're supposed to be the expert. So if, if you said something, you know if it's right or wrong. Why would you get upset? Because he mentioned something about pitching. I ain't getting upset. We all got a little bit of knowledge. We all have done something in this game. So I'm an infield coach. If he's an outfield coach and he come tell me something about infield, I'm gonna listen to what he's saying and I'm gonna let him know if he's right or wrong and I'm gonna explain it to him. I'm not gonna just let him know he's right or wrong. I'm gonna explain what he's talking about, why it don't work or why I can use it. He didn't take none of my knowledge and wisdom away by making a comment about infield play. I know more than him. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yes, you know more pitching than, than Haas know. But he made a comment of something about pitching. It's up to you to educate him. It's up to you to educate him. Or take him. it in and, and maybe see if you can use it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And like you, like you said, we all done a little something in this game. So, so like you, I was saying, the players are going to have questions with stuff. So if, if I know you're not giving me a real answer and you ain't well equipped, it's going to be hard for me to buy in. And... I love all what you guys are saying because you guys are talking about what winning looks like, what winning, what the whole building looks like. And as a coach and you asking me something, if I don't know it, I'm going to point blank tell you, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to go get the answer, answer. and I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> That's right. Now when I come back with that answer, now I know too. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad about telling you I don't know. And I don't care how you think of me when I told you I don't know. Right. I went and got the answer for you. Because when you came to me, you didn't know. Now you know. Now both of us are smart. <laughs> Here we go. Check the ego at the door. Yeah, That's both right. of us are smart. Check, your ego Check the, at the ego door. at the door. I don't worry about that type of stuff. Come on, man. And I told my coaches, stay in your lane. 
We ain't got no lane. None of us got lane. The only person got a lane here is me. Because I'm the big dog. <laughs> That's the only person got a lane here. But you guys, y'all don't have a lane. That's right. If he talk about something that you're an expert at, educate him. Let him know if he's right or wrong. Why should your feelings be hurt? Because he said something about what you do in your field. At the moment, he was actually being a jack. But he might be right. You see what I'm saying? And it might be something that can help because you do know something about baseball. So why are you getting upset? That's the way I roll. Right. My coach has got freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should know when something comes up when you should bring it to me. And if you handle something, you should let me know what you handle. It could be tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? You may not have had a chance to get to me today, but hey, Skip, Eric was doing this and I did this and I did that. It, you know, it was out of line, but I got it back in check. I just wanted to let you know. I'm not going to Eric. You don't already handle it. But I know. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Or if it's something you can't handle, you come directly to me. And I'm going to get out of my seat. Stop doing what I'm doing and what I'm going to go do. Handle it. <laughs> handle it. <laughs> because I want you to play. I don't want you thinking about all of this. And if I got to go handle that to get you free, I'm going to handle it. So that's, that's what... The, the days that I've been further removed from Ned Yost in Kansas City, I was a young, dumb rookie with a mohawk <laughs> doing my thing off the field. Watch, I was feeling myself, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm sitting here like, Ned Yost, man, he can do this and this and this better, all this type of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And the further that I was removed from the situation, I keep growing a bigger, bigger, just, I, I have so much more respect for him because like you said, he let all of his coaches do their job. The infield coach, me and Mike Jersley, we had our dialogue to the point where like something should never get serious enough to be on your plate. No. That shit should be handled from the veteran leadership to the coach. It shouldn't get to that spot. But I should know about it. You should definitely know about it because it's your team and that's that's your clubhouse and that's what's going on. What I love, what I would love to ask you, and it's something that, you know, as I try to be a veteran leader in, in San Diego, I think I got a little caught up in the wrong shit and, and thinking of different stuff other than just whatever, whoever we're facing tonight, that game tonight. So now going to LA with your big dog Trout there, that that player, and that's the captain of your team. So that manager player relationship, what's that balance like? Like you want him focused on the game, you want him doing his thing. So how do you, how do you balance that out? Conversations. That's all, I sit down and I tell him how I feel. And I want him to always tell me how he feel. I always want him to tell me what he think I need to do to make things more satisfying for them in the clubhouse. I want him to let me know when something is not right in that clubhouse and I gotta come up in there and put it in check. And I want him to check me when I'm out of check. When I need to be checked, check me. I can handle that. But I don't ever want you to forget I'm the shit here. And I told it to him just like that. What he's gonna do. I'm the shit. I'm gonna make the decisions, but I'm gonna make the decisions with you involved. I'm gonna make the decisions according to what you think I need to do. I'm gonna assess what you tell me. And if the way you want it done, I'm gonna let you know that ain't happening, dog. This is how we are gonna go about this. And the reason why the way you want it done can't happen because you cannot treat your teammates this way or that way. All teammates gotta be treated the same whether you number one or number 26, because they all are leaders. You see what I'm saying? They all are leaders. I want them all to be leaders. If you the only one able to check, that ain't right. Because then you, you feel like you can't be checked. Every now and then you let your guards down and you gotta be checked too. And when I let my guard down, check me. Did I tell you that all the time? All the time. And check me. Let me ask you this now. So, <laughs> and, 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 I don't mean any disrespect. I don't think you're going to see it in this type of way. As Ron Washington talking to Mike Trout right now, you've earned that respect and you are the sh and you can tell him, hey, this is who I am. If you're a rookie manager in that situation or a young manager, and in my opinion, in today's day and age, there's a lot of managers that really don't have that background or that resume to be sitting in that seat. And they are. And I'm not trying to say whether it's deserved or not, but as this young manager in that seat, 
telling a Mike Trout that and Mike Trout looking back at him being like, no, I'm the shit. But if your words can become your action and your action can become your behavior, he's going to buy in. You know what I'm saying? Because you creating a picture. I am exactly doing what I say. You see what I'm saying? And every time I say it, you get a vision of it. And it's going to be constant. And it's going to be the same thing. And if I get out of line, I'm the first one to stand up. I'm sorry, I did this, I did that. But I'm still in charge here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's something that I love too is before you guys were talking here, we were, we were talking about the infield drills and the towel and, and all that. And, and Pete was saying, he's like, listen, Wash is going to be at that, that same spot every single day. And you built up the rapport with the Atlanta guys that they did come out there and get their work in. And, th and that was it. But he's like, dude, Wash ain't going to hound you, man. You ain't coming out there to do your thing. Hey, that's fine. And to me, that is like, if you're a grown ass man, you know damn well you need to be out there doing your job. I'm not going to hold you accountable to that. To me, that's. It's so refreshing because in, in, in a day and age now where, you know, the game is getting younger, understandably so as it should, but that's just a natural way of, of growing up and well, teaching it's, these it's, dudes. It's, it's gaining credibility. You see what I'm saying? Um, you gain credibility through everyone you touch. That's where you gain credibility through. As I told you, Ozzy was my puppet because he had no choice because he was hurt. I dealt with Ozzy. And all my attention was on Ozzy, Ozzy, <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> well, and then they start seeing Ozzy grow, 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 grow. And then all them other guys around, they want some of that. <laughs> they want some of that. So then here come Riley, here come Dansby. And then all of a sudden, here come Freddie. <laughs> here come Freddie. The yeah. big dog. Because he knew what they was. And then when I touched them, he see what they was becoming. He wants some of it. I want some of it. Hey, I, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, there will be pitching changes. It would be you, Acuna, and Albies over there yeah. first, and I'm just there minding my own business or whatever. <laughs> Albies is over there looking at me. Or he looking at me over there. Man. And I'm like, hey, I want to know what's going on here, man. I want some of this. <laughs> That's right. That's true. Those That's dudes, true. I will tell we you this, real, man. man. We, we, we talk real with them. Anybody, everybody we around, we talk real. I got a little kid right now. I'm not going to say his name. He said, I coach too hard. No, I coach matter of fact. There's a difference in coaching hard and coaching matter of fact. This is how it's done. You could either do it your way or do it this way. But you know what? You come and do it. Now, you want to come do it your way? What I'm doing? going to whip your butt. It's going to whip your butt. Now you come here every morning and take a butt whipping and leave. I don't care because you taking that butt whipping because you don't want to make a adjustment in the game of baseball is adjust and what readjust and it's adjust and readjust and it's adjust and readjust and it's adjust and real it's ongoing. So you don't want to adjust, but you know what? You come and get this every morning. I'm not going to change. You the one got to make a, a change. For sure. And then one day, are you going to help me? Man, ever since I've been here, I've been trying to help you. <laughs> but if you want to strip yourself naked and get started, I can help and build you back up. Well, Major League players, they don't want to go down to the strip down to the underwear. See what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to go down to go back up. And there's nobody that you could be with that could help you come back up. He's here with you every day. I'm that guy. All you got to do is give me some trust and show up. And each and every one of them finally gave in and moved forward. All I want you to do is come work. My work will show you what you're doing is incorrect. It will show you. I don't have to open my mouth. So if you want to come here and look bad every morning, look bad and leave. And, and be talked what, about. Yeah. <laughs> you know they're going to talk about it. Yeah, they're going to talk about it. And somebody <laughs> that's, that's got it going to convince them, man, stop being hard-headed. You better go get that. And they come and get it. That was Freddie. When you guys talk about being real and, and 
I think about that team in Texas when then you guys were going through your run and, and I'm sure you know about this, but there was a uh, before game seven, there was a speech in the locker room and ended up getting leaked out. Yeah. And and it was Ron Washington there and he said, Man, hey, I'm in the press conference there and these motherfuckers got the nerve to ask me about some car from there. I don't give a f about no car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about hey, I'm worried about my boys. I'm worried about my boys. Get fucked about no carpenter. <laughs> and, Ask me if we gonna go up there because he's on a couple days rest and start taking pictures. I say carpenter take ball and throw a ball across the plate. We gonna knock the <laughs> shit out of him. Yes. Man, I tell you what. You don't even know what that speech did to us in Kansas City. As minor league boys, we heard all this stuff and it was like, man, like that team in Texas you guys had, it was a factory. It was a system. You guys weren't playing nobody else. You guys were playing yourself and yeah. holding it up to a standard out there to the point where it was like, man, this is unbelievable. And what'd you say Ian Kinzer said? That there is no other manager that's pitch to pitch in this with right. us. We love Wash because we look over there and he wears his emotions everywhere. Not just on his sleeve, it's from head to toe. And we know he's in every single pitch that we're in with us, going to war every single day with us. That's how you do it. Yeah. I was taught like that. And everything that I was taught, everything you see in me today, there were other coaches and people that put it in me. I certainly wasn't like this when I was 18 years old. I was sharp when I was 18 years old. I had a vision. I could see things that some guys around me couldn't see, you know, because I wasn't afraid to take a chance. I wasn't afraid of failure. A lot of people is afraid of failure. I'm not afraid of failure. Failure is momentary. See what I'm saying? I'm not a failure. I failed at something, but it's only momentary. And that's the only way I was thinking about it even when I was 16, 17 years old. You beat me, you better come back better than you was today when you beat me. Because if you come with that same stuff you beat me with yesterday, it ain't working. And then I'm past that. Now I got another challenge. And I'm going to figure out how to get that one. And then I'm past that. And I got another challenge. And then I'm past that. And, I, and it, they're constantly coming. They're constantly coming. They're constantly coming. And you, you just got to deal with them. If you don't deal with them, you're going to open up your closet door one day and it's going to fall out on you again. So I'd rather deal with it. And if the decision is being made by someone else, it's already off of my mind. I dealt with the part I'm supposed to deal with. And I can't worry about nothing else when I was worried about it all. But now I done dealt with it. I ain't got to worry about it no more because when they make their decision, then I can move on from that. But it's, I'm clear of it because I dealt with it. I'm not holding on to it. And I tell him that all the time. You'll say something. And I said, go deal with it. Go deal with it. Oh, what, what you, you going to do about it? Yeah. What you going to do about it? <laughs> we always talk about like, uh, the team is like the team is is a uh, you know like the manager's personality. You can see that in the team, and you can see how it rubs off in the team. So, when my first couple of years in San Diego, we had Kinsler over there. So, like I told you, we we're in the same complex and surprise, and and Texas is doing their thing for a couple of years. And I just always had so many questions on how stuff you know happened over there and how it went about. And you know, I was in San Diego. We're on the flight one night with Ken's, and I'm like, hey, man, give me some Ron Wash stories, man. Like, I know, like, <laughs> this guy's the manager. He's the best. Dude. He's the man. Let me, let, I need to hear something, man. He's like, let me tell you about Wash, man. Wash, uh, we're rolling up. I think we're going to Minnesota at some point in time during the year, and, and they're going to have an alumni game for Wash. So a month <laughs> leading up until this alumni game, Wash is in there in the cage. He's getting hacks. He's doing his thing. He's, <laughs> hey, he's out there getting ready to go. Ready to roll, baby. Let's go. So, you know, the boys are out there, they're fired up for this alumni game and they get there early to the park. They get out there to watch Wash. <laughs> and then he told me, Wash ends up blowing out the first thing. I did. Hey, but Wash went out there and finished the rest of the game. I finished and that he game. And he posted. And he told me, hey, the team from that point on, how are you going to not post after your manager just and went out and did it? And missed the main thing. I got three knocks. <laughs> Twice I went to that plate and I brought a runner up there and I told him, you getting on the bag. <laughs> See, the other guys was just going through the motion. I wasn't going through no motion. <laughs> and I had my boys over there, all the shit I talked. Man, I'm not going through no motion, all the shit I talked. <laughs> oh, I can't. I was ready. Oh. And I got three knocks. <laughs> I, I played, started off in center field. 
That's when I pulled my hammy <laughs> and I moved to second base. I stayed in the game. Oh, yeah. And I got three knocks. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Three so, knocks. Not one, one, not two. Three knocks. Three of them things, dude. <laughs> three of them things. Um, one off of Eddie Guardado. Hey. Remember um, that Eddie? I, you remember? I got you one remember. off of Bert Blyland. You, so. you remember the name? And I got one off of Jack Mars. <laughs> Jack Morris shoved it up my butt when I was a player. <laughs> I never faced Eddie Guadalupe when I was a player. <laughs> Bert Blylevin buckled me worse than anybody ever did. Threw me a curveball the first time I seen him, and I buckled out of there. And I don't know if y'all don't remember Kaiser. Kaiser, the umpire, was one of them that went, ah! <laughs> and he did that to me. And I said, Kaiser, the ball has almost hit me. He said, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Kaiser. <laughs> Stuff I never you. ran again from a Burt Bly 11 curveball. He had to hit me with it. That's how nasty it was. I wasn't running. I wasn't running. It just was going to have to hit me because he embarrassed me. I, oh, man. He all, yeah. I said, that's, that ball almost hit me. See how you know. <laughs> you ain't about to get me again. Absolutely <laughs> no. not. So that's what I, that's the kind of attitude that I want my players to have. You see what I'm saying? We're going to live or die with, with what we're doing. And we're not gonna ever give in. And that's the attitude that my guys have. This feels like the last six or seven years have been like a father-son relationship. I wanna to touch on EY Junior and the fact that what you're passing down, what you're learning from Wash, being able to pass down to, to your son who's followed in your footsteps now and, and is, now, is now coaching. He's now coaching. I, I tell you, I, I try to pass a lot down to him. Not at all at one time, because he won't, he'll miss moments and situations that I really want him to understand. I mean, you're talking about, this is every day, you know, teaching me something, I'm learning something. It's like, so I have to decipher when I want to give certain things to my son, who's young in his career. However, I want him to get it. I think it's very important for him to get it because this is how I'm becoming a better coach. And I want him to be the best coach that he can be. So it's, it's, it's up to him to take in what I'm giving, just like it's up to me to take in what he's giving to me. Now, what I'm going to do with it, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to apply it and I'm going to pass it on to my son and hopefully my son get it and pass it on to some other coach and it keeps going around. You know, he had a saying that um, if I give you something, it's yours. And a lot of times I bite on a lot of stuff he tells me and everything and I'm actually using it actually when I'm speaking to the team or this and that. Uh, you know, you touched on something. I want to come back to it. You talked about that Kansas talk to City me, baby team. Boy. I want to talk to you, baby. <laughs> you know, I want to give it to you. You know, <laughs> you, you talk about, you know, you wanted to know what the Texas team was doing. You know, winners want to find out what winners are doing and what they have done to get to that success and everything. And I remember when he first put out, you know, he puts out these sheets. Yeah. You know, every day uh, with a saying on it. And, uh, but it starts off with attitude, commitment, effort, you know? And it's like, when you're trying to come to a new team, what attitude you want them to have when they walk through the door? Well, we winners. So when we walk through the door, we expect to win. We expect to prepare like winners. We expect to win. Now, how do you get there? You get there with commitment of each guy, throwing everything they got, checking the eagles at the door, and making it happen for each other. That's right. Because it's nothing like winning when you win with a group of guys who have grinded for months, you know? And so to experience that, it's like, you can't even really describe what that feeling is unless you actually went through it. And then you talk about the effort. There's no excuse for you entering that door and giving your best effort to be the best player you can be. And then I have a saying that as a team, we will be defined by the moments we seize. So if we get a bunch of guys collectively giving up great moments, there's gonna be some bad moments, but you get more great out of the broader picture of 26 men than yourself. You can have great moments by yourself, but you need those other great moments by those other players when they get an opportunity to shine in that moment. So when you talk about guys being individuals and being themselves, you can't win by yourself in this game of baseball. 
it's hard and really in any sport when you think about it. But you need 26 minds along with that manager and them coaches on the same page. And each, each, each coach and each member in that locker room is going to have a moment. What are you going to do when that moment comes? But if you've already prepared with the attitude, commitment, you put the effort in there. You create the memories. You create the memories. And this is us. That that's lead dog up there. That's right. That's me and my coaching staff. This dog down here, that's the players following us. That's how it's going to happen. We the difference makers. Keep, that's right. We are the difference makers. We're going to lead the way. And those that can't keep up, <laughs> they're going to just fall off the train. That's right. That's right. Because we're never going to do this. We're going to always be leading the way. Always. And we the difference makers. Watch, let me ask you this, man. How, I know you got a lot of love for them boys in Atlanta, the staff, everybody, because, you know, this winning stuff we're talking about, that's, I mean, you, you guys had a swagger about you to where, you know, you, you guys were the show each and every night. And how hard was it to you? And, and, and some of the stuff you're going through right now with the attitude and the ego and all that, how hard and at the same time, how thankful what, are you because you're going into Atlanta as a third base coach for X amount of years, knowing damn well you should be a manager, knowing damn well you can be running another team and another organization right now. So was it hard to the to really just like Fully leave your the ego. ego on the side yeah. and be like, I'm an assistant coach now, I'm not a manager? And how how is that buy-in? Like what it what was, was your, it wasn't hard because I knew I was a third base coach infield coach. I didn't go there to be the manager. I didn't go there to second guess. That's what kept me out of second guessing right. is I went there to be what they hired me for. Whatever they wanted to know from me, all they had to do was ask. But I went there to be the infield coach and the third base coach. And that's what I soaked all of my stuff into. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Players would come around, coaches would come around and ask me, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And my answer would be, I'm not the manager. Oh, you know, I'm not the manager. <laughs> How many times I did that? Oh, a lot. Don't ask me that. That's right. Because you're asking me to second guess the manager. That's right. I can tell you what I think, but I can't tell you what I know because I don't know. He's the only one that knows. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I can only tell you what I think because I'm not the decision maker. And I'm not gonna tell you what I think because that would sound like I'm second guessing and I'm not doing that. My job is to coach third base and to get you guys the best that I can get you. And that's the only thing I'm thinking about. Was there a difference in this particular interview process with the Angels? I know you've interviewed for a ton of managers roles over the years. When I text you, you were, you were adamant. I could feel it in the text that you wanted this one more than you've wanted maybe the other ones? Is that what it was? No, it was the opportunity again. When life throws things at you, you can't pick and choose. I've never been in that position where I can pick and choose what I do. All I can do is what given to me is try to turn it into the best that I could turn it into. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to do that. So. A lot of people ask me, man, why would you go take that job in Anaheim? They ain't going nowhere. When I get there, they will. It's about your attitude. It's about your commitment. It's about your effort. I'm all of that. I've all been all of that. I don't mind molding. I don't, not, I don't mind building. We're not building anything, but what I am trying to do is I'm trying to give them some guidance, some leadership. I got plenty of that. And as far as Atlanta goes, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because when I went to Atlanta, I finally got my worth in this game. I finally got my worth. You see what I'm saying? And I got there with young 19-year-old kids, like I told EY, that wanted to be taught. They wanted to be guided. They wanted to have somebody that would take the blame for them. And I was willing to do that. As long as you're willing to put in the time that it takes for you to do what you have to do to be the best that you can be, I'll take all the blame. But that is the only way I'm going to take the blame. 
with you doing what you're supposed to do. And then I got your back forever. And those kids did. It was 19 years old and became champions by the time they got to 23, 24 years old. Because they dedicated themselves to be the best they could be for everybody that was on that team. And so when things went astray, I stepped in front of it, took the arrows. The thing about the arrows, I can always pull them out. <laughs> None of them was detrimental. You see what I'm saying? All I did was let the people know that was trying to hurt them know that you got to go through me to get to them. That's all. You got to go through me to get to them. And their job is to play. And I want them to stay in that mode of playing. I'll handle anything else that's on the outside of playing. And they got it. They got it. Well, they damn sure did, man. And yeah. that's that's what's so what's so unique and what's so what's so special about the whole thing is, I mean, now the credibility, it's instant credibility, like we said, as as a coach on his staff now in LA, he could have easily asked that question of, man, I should be a manager right now, but they hired me to be the third base coach. They hired me to do this. This is what I'm gonna do to the max level. So I mean, practice what you preach, whatever that type of saying is, that is you 100%. And that's got to be a, a, a good feeling as a coach on the staff, as, as, the, as the head skipper, that you know what I'm talking about, and this is what we're doing out here. And, and there's no one that can question that. Um, my boy Johnny Wash, he's over there as a hitting yeah. coach now, huh? He knows yeah. how to... He's got that Compton in him, huh? A little bit. Yeah, he's, a, <laughs> he's, man, you guys are going to love he's him. He's a different animal. He yes, is. He's he got is. some energy. He's a shit star. He loves baseball. He stirs, <laughs> he stirs up shit. Every day. Every moment. Stirs up shit. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in the beginning, I couldn't get a peep out of him, oh, huh? He's quiet. I used to always throw him on the spot. When we was having our meetings, I used to throw him on the spot. I said, bro, it's time for you to start opening up and talk. We all up in here talking, and you sitting over there. Stealing money. Hey, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. J Dub never been hey, a. Oh, he was quiet at first. Oh yeah, he and I quiet. just kept, I just kept throwing him out there and throwing him out there and throwing him out there. Mm. <laughs> Can't stop him. I, I'm sure. Ey, you remind me of you were talking about seizing, seizing opportunities. Is that where you the moments, seizing the, moment. the moment, seizing yeah. the moment. So remind me of a so a quote. So Sun Tzu, famous military general, very iconic strategist. And he has one of my favorite quotes, opportunities are multiplied at, when they are seized. And I just think it's really cool to hear what you guys are doing, seize this moment, seize this moment, and then you get another opportunity, seize that opportunity, then you get another one. And it's gonna be really neat to see this opportunity that, that you have in front of you and this, to watch you seize it and to, to hear about your approach and your frameworks and your mindset and your vision for going forward. So it should be, a, it should be really cool to watch you seize it. And, and you know, I let, them, I let everybody know this is not gonna be easy. But I've never lived my life easy. But I'm going to show you that we can get it done. You know, in my press conference, I say, we're going to run the West down. Oh, they took that and they ran all around the country with it. <laughs> of course they did. You know what I'm saying? So then Harold Reynolds, of course, that's my boy, he put me on the spot because he wanted me to explain myself. And I explained him. When I say I'm going to run the West down, we're going to learn how to play baseball the way baseball is supposed to be played. And when we do that and we start matching the teams that are ahead of us, we start matching their game every night we play them. What you think I'm thinking? I'm going to run them down. I'm, I'm, my, my whole key is to run them down, get in front of them. What am I supposed to think? I'm supposed to think I'm supposed to stay back here? No. No. I already put it out there. And I'm not going to back down from it. It's out there. Now it's up to me to get my team in position to back it up themselves, not back me up. They don't have to back me up because we're going to play baseball the way baseball is supposed to be played. And if we do that, we're going to run you down. <laughs> it's just that simple. You think I'm going to stay in last place? No. So you guys in first, we coming. That's what I meant. We coming. We coming. Them other ones might be satisfied with where they at, but not the Los Angeles Angels. <laughs> <laughs> we coming. Yeah, I cannot and, wait and to we watch have this. to have the guys that are mentally tough and prepared to accept the challenge to back what the skipper is saying. And we're going to do the work to make it happen. That's right. We gonna and if prepared. you can't handle the work, guess what you're going to have to do? Get off board, get off board, get on board, get off. Board. <laughs> get off. There's somebody out there that want to be on this train. That's right. See what I'm saying? 
And that's what we're looking We want to be on the train. <laughs> we want to we jump on that train. <laughs> and we're doing things to make that happen every single day. Now, there's some guys in spring training right now. Oh, my leg hurt. This hurt. <laughs> Bro, if you can't grind in spring training, how are you going to help us grind when we get to the 162? You better learn how to grind now. Because when we get to 162 and you come crying to me like that, I'm going to give you a plane ticket, dog. You can go back to AAA, AA, wherever you're from. Or 4 a a for it. That's right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But no, 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 we grinding. We're going to figure this out. And we're going to figure this out together. And if you can't stay on board, I ain't got no problem with you getting off. Because if you get off, that means you was a weak link anyway. I said that I'm not going to be carrying no, no, no baggage. An interview I did. Oh, that went all around the country. That I said I'm not carrying... Somebody that don't handle, they don't, don't carry their own luggage. You know what I mean? Don't, don't carry their weight. Mm -hmm. If they don't do their job the way it's supposed to be done, they're not going to be here. Oh, that went around the country. What am I supposed to do? Because, again, if I was a player and the manager said that, and I'm next to my boys, that son ain't talking to me. He ain't talking to me. He must be talking about you. <laughs> we going to you say he, he ain't must talking to me. He ain't talking to you. That's he right. Goes, oh, all the way around. around it's baby. not going to be me. Yep. Yep. So if that statement bring that kind of stuff up in you, you ain't going to be with me. That's simple. Because I'm telling you, I heard a manager say that. That son bitch ain't talking to me. I ain't even bothered by that. You see what I'm saying? He must be talking to you. Because mm, he ain't talking about me. <laughs> yeah, you, know what I'm saying. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. He's, he's point talking about him. Yeah, so. And just keep going around. Yeah. But so that's where we are. I tell you what, man, I'm, I'm so happy for you guys because, you know, what happened in Texas last year, like you're saying, we're, we're coming for the West. But what happened in Texas last year, in my eyes and in all of our eyes, is, you know, uh, a former player being a, a general manager and they are – Bruce Bochy to come take over, an, an OG of the game, a guy that's been around and knows baseball, and they win, and you feel like the trend of, the, of baseball is getting back towards that. But the whole, everything you guys are saying right now, the message, the lifestyle, the work, the routine, everything about what you need to do every single day, we're going to be fully tuned into you guys. And You know, there's people that work hard, and there's people that like to work hard. Well, I want the ones that are hard workers not the ones that like to work hard. Because the hard workers, what they know? Nothing else. The ones that like to work hard, when obstacles hit, they get off. That guy that's a hard worker, he's not getting off because that's all he know how to do. See what I'm saying? And that's what we had in Atlanta. These guys come and they was hard workers. People on the other side that see us would always say, Man, y'all all out here working. Y'all work so hard. No, 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 no. We don't work hard. That's what we do. So when you work hard, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So it ain't work. It's a standard. I don't feel it. Because this is what I do. Those that don't do it are the ones that feel it. But the ones that does it, they don't feel it because it's what? What we do. It's what we do. What we do? I tell you what, Wash. I know, I know you got a young stud over there at first base, but if you need a motherfucker to come off that bench, <laughs> hey, hey, and, and go helmet down, I'll tell the pitcher just get to the riser bag. Everything else, I got it. Yeah, I'm ready for you, baby. All right. <laughs> and that little kid, he's uh, it's surprising how he has grown in our three weeks together, because brother, they never been approached like this, and he has. I said, who is this guy? Every night, every day, come out there to work. We say, who is this guy? Are you the same guy that was here two, three weeks ago? And he crack a big smile. Because they never had nobody mess with him like that. Mm -hmm. Bro, I don't know who you are. What's your name again? My name is Ron Morrison. I'm the manager here. What's your name? That's how he has transformed. He's, he's transforming his game. You see what I'm saying? And I love it, man, because he's a, he's a South Florida guy. And, you know, I knew his whole situation. He came up early in the big leagues last year. And then when you guys get hired on over there, it's like a comforting feeling. It's like he's he's in good hands. You yeah. know what I mean? He's in and good he is hands. in good hands. I can't wait for and it. And he's a, he's a good kid, you know? Um, I asked him about where he wanted to hit in the lineup. Well, I don't want to hit in front. Behind, you know, I don't want to take my... I, I didn't ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> where do you want to hit in the lineup? You see, I like hitting second. That's what I ask you. Don't give me that essay. 
I went to Nito and I said, where you want to hit? He said, ninth. I mean, he just gave it to me. So I brought Nito over to him. I say, Nito, how decisive of a person are you? Very decisive. I say, Shannon, how decisive of a person are you? He's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I say, you see what Neto just did? Yeah. That's what you do, man. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Be decisive. <laughs> don't worry about Mike and them. I'm going to take care of them. I'm asking you where you most comfortable because I really don't want you in the leadoff spot. I don't want you clogging up my bases. <laughs> And he thought that was funny. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm trying to put you somewhere where you don't clog up the bases. I hit you lead off, you getting all over the base, and, and you can't, a ball in the dirt, you can't go to second. I can go to second. And guess what he did just recently? Yeah. Started stealing bags. You're talking about stealing bags, A. Hey. We woke him up. <laughs> this dude over here, man. This dude's like painting. <laughs> Peyton Manning over here in the snap. <laughs> He's over there calling hot rouse. Hey, E7, hey, Hosmer, E7, red, red, red. And I'm like, he what? Hey, baby boy, what are you doing? I'm going to find these signs. He goes, you ain't going to get me, baby yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the signals for his runners. Yeah. yeah. And I'm when like, to stay and when to go. Yeah. You guys are so, so in every, sync, Everybody man. had their own cold word. Yeah. I mean, Freddie had his own, own cold word and. uh so I would do signals like, because I know you guys were listening to first baseman. They were listening. And they had do they flash or whatever to the pitcher when they think he's picking it over. And I, I'll just tell you one in particular, uh, Freddie's. So Freddie, uh, mom name is Rose. Am I right? What's that? Freddie Rose. Freeman. Freddie Freeman's mom. mom yeah. Named Rose. Yeah. So he, I said, Freddie, what, what do you want for your cold? He said, Rose. So his cold to run was anything with Rose in it. Rose Garden. Rosemont, you know. So I would go and like I'm talking to the umpire sometimes or even talking to you. I said, you know, man, you big on Valentine's Day. You about sending roses? And Freddie's listening. That was his call. I wanted him to run on that pitch. If I was you, I'd run on that pitch. Hey, man, where the, where the, I go to the umpire and say, well, hey, Boston, no. What's that garden up there? No, no. It's what, a rose Portland. garden. That's, yeah, the rose garden. What, that's in Portland, right? And the umpire go, yeah. That was his goal. He gone. He gone. <laughs> he gone. So sometimes I throw to see what you were doing at first base. They would get signals. I call like a footballer. Omaha, Omaha, check. Check down, check down. Black 125. <laughs> to see what he was going to do. And sometimes they had, you know, give that signal to them, throw over. And me and the, me and the base runner would. Got him. So now we're talk. Some They're guys were football teams. Jets, green, right? Run. Cardinals, red. So I go green, baby. I say, man, what's your favorite team? And you tell me a team? I said, nah, nah, man. I'm, I'm from Detroit. I like the Jets. I don't even like the Giants. That was just cold to run. I'm thinking this dude's trying to get to know me, man. <laughs> <laughs> He was using you. Yeah. Hey, God, he, said right? Miami, he said Miami, yeah. too. You said the dog, oh, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was using you. Come on, I man. Said, I said, e, you know, hey. I was interested. You know, I wanted to know about Miami now. You know, don't get it twisted now. I wanted to know about Miami. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the fun part of it. Because, uh, you know, all each one of them wanted their own code. And they was into it, man. Mm -hmm. They were into, into it. it. Yeah. In every aspect. Yeah. And, yeah. like, the base were inside. Like, yeah. like Freddie, I'm sure... At some point in time, Freddie's seeing you come up to dudes being like, hey, man, I got a key on this guy. Yeah, I got this on this guy. I was like, you want to come up to me, man? Hey, what we got? And that's how that starts. I was the type of base runner. I just, as soon as I got you in a conversation, I got you. I'm out. I'm just sneak attack. And then as soon as I, if it's a foul ball, I shut it down the rest of the series. And that's it. But hey, at least you came to get to know me here. I'm thinking this dude's getting to know me. No, he, he, you my <laughs> man. You my man. I enjoy. I enjoy the conversation. You. Hey, I, I'm yo. just, I'm just a little upset. I wouldn't even say upset. I was just wondering why he said, "E, you know what? Let's go, you know, break bread. Let's go out to dinner or something like that. You know, let's go have lunch or something." I thought we would get that because I really like E as a person. And, and, and Manny, I like Manny. Mm -hmm. He always came over there smelling good. Yeah. yeah. So I said, oh, hey, man, man, why don't you give me some of that cologne cool. you wear? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send it over there. I'm still waiting. Man. Hey. He going to hear this, too. He going to hear this, too. He going to have it until yeah. yeah. like, yeah. like I'm still waiting. You need to tell him to send you one of his watches. He's got a nice little watch collection over there. But it's, man, it's so cool because there was a couple times where we thought you were going to come over to San Diego and be our manager. I was and, supposed to be. 
Man, I you know I was coming plenty of times. You always said that. I was that. supposed to be, man. You I really was. Said that. Just that uh, some circumstances didn't work out. And it didn't happen. No but, doubt, uh, man. I was but looking forward to it. I really did. I, <laughs> you I, were. I nailed out. the interview. Man, I nailed that interview. Hey. Oh yeah. And I'm telling Stole you right now. Stole all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Stole all my stuff. <laughs> From a player perspective, everybody wanted you over there, man, and. and I feel connected to you guys in a way, and I just played against you guys for all these years, but I've still found a way to learn from the infield stuff that you do, to be able to talk to you and, and over there at first base. So, man, I can't thank you guys enough for doing this. You guys are some OGs in the it's game. It's our and, pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's our, our pleasure. pleasure, especially when Seriously. we talk, come to talking baseball. I can do it all night with you boys here. Yes, indeed. Really appreciate it. Come to see Mate. Thank you, boys. My and man. It's, uh, it's, it's just been such a tremendous transition you know, and like I said, when we first got here, our transition was with the front office people. We had to get them to understand who we was and what we was about. Once we got that squared away, then we had to do it with the players. Then we got that squared away, and now we just going to work. And we getting that squared away every day. You know, I mean, we've been playing three to two, two to one, one to nothing ball games. We got young pitching that's starting to smell itself. We got two young pitching coaches. Man, they know they sh And they got these young boys going, man. I'm not lying. We getting outs with 12 pitches, 15 pitches, 14 pitches. And I said, man, I ain't never experienced this before. I was used to 21, 22, 24 pitches an inning in Atlanta. And these young kids, we just been pounding them about getting out as quick as they can. I dropped this on them. We gonna seal this infield off. We gonna seal that outfield off. And y'all gonna seal that mound off. So when we playing an opponent, when we playing an opponent, what's happening with them? We got everything on lockdown. It's locked down. <laughs> <laughs> it's locked down. Yeah. <laughs> reminds me of Wayne Kirby out there in the outfield. He said, I run a no-fly zone out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's locked down. Mm -hmm. You hit it on the infield, down. it's going to get picked up. You hit an outfield with a hump in it, it's coming down in the glove. And you guys is pounding the strike zone. Now, what is the 180 in is now is the, the thing that they're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Roger Clemson then was going for 300, dog. You know, one year in Texas, I had five starters, two years in a row that got the ball to start 32 starts, two years in a row. Now, 23, 24 starts is the max, 25. And 180 innings is, is the max? That's mediocre. That's mediocre. And that's because they're doing four and two thirds in five innings. I want pitches. my boys to get me out through the six, get me out in the seven. And as soon as you give up a base hit in the seven, I'm coming get you. Mm -hmm. You done gave me seven and a third. I got a bullpen that can get the rest. But if you're giving me four and two thirds and giving me five innings, I'm going to wear them boys out. And look how strong, look, look, look at that bullpen we got. Look at them. Y'all stand up. All of them monsters. I see, we want to keep them like that. And the only way we can keep them like that, you got to get me to the seventh inning. Get me in the seven. And those monsters standing up right there, it's gonna be shut down and they standing there like this. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the boys that's gonna take the game home right there. Them big boys. But we need y'all to get it to them so they don't have to overwork themselves. Because if one of them have a hiccup and you giving me the, the ball in the fifth inning, we just blew our bullpen up. We can't blow them up. We're going to teach y'all how to get through six into the seven. And then if you make it to the seven, I'm telling you now, you got one batter at a time. As soon as somebody get on, I'm going to come pat you on your back. Thank you. If you get three outs in the seventh and your pitch account is like it's supposed to be, you might get a shot at the eighth. But as soon as somebody get on, I'm coming get you. And if you get through the eighth, then I'm gonna have to give it to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's still getting that. He's still getting it. Yeah. No, no, you get through the eight. I'm giving it to him. Oh, He's still that's getting great. It. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. And they've been, 
I'm telling you, man, they've been 15, 8, 6. They're young, you know? And like I say, the pitching coaches I got, man, they are the best. Who's he? Is Barry Enright. Barry Enright. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and Steve Carson. Steve is an animal. Barry is the, the cuddly boy. <laughs> but Steve Carsey is an animal. And he got the bullpen and Barry got the starters. And they teaching them baseball. They really are. Beautiful. And they, they know that analytics. Mm. But they teaching them their skill set. See what I'm saying? They not there with that spin rate and all of this stuff. <laughs> Execution. Ready. Yeah. You're ready. I'm excited, man, about yeah. those guys. I when I interviewed them, I didn't think there was young guys out here that thought the way I thought. And I'm interviewing them and they pulling thoughts I have in my head out of my head. I say, I'll be down. We got those kind of guys out there that young. Barry's only 34, 35 years old. Sharp as a whip. I'm talking about, about baseball. Mm-hmm. And he know that analytic stuff too. Yeah. But I'm talking baseball. I had Steve Carsey when he was a baby in Oakland. And he was an animal then. And he's still an animal. And he's going to teach them young boys how to be an animal. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they need. And right now they're buying in. Now, I don't know what's going to happen when the season start. Season start and then all of a sudden the pitch count just go out the roof. But they beginning to experience Attacking the zone, what can happen? You see what I'm saying? And all I want you to do is attack the zone because every morning and every evening, we are there tightening up the defense. So if you put it in play, it's 99% chance you're going to get an out. That's how much I believe in what we're doing That It's going to be a 99% chance when you put it in play, it's out. And we all know it's not going to be no 99% chance. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. But that's our mindset. And before you know it, every time that's something put in play, boys making plays. Boys finishing plays. See what I'm saying? Boys believing. Believe. Yeah. Mindset. You got to right. right. be right. loving that's that. Yeah. That's awesome. This is great. Yeah. This is yeah. great. My first saying I put out this year was what? Mindset. mindset. First game we played, I put it out about the mindset. And been rolling ever since. It's a mindset, man. Yeah. And like I say, your actions, you know, become the picture that you portray. And that's what, I even told Mike, he was saying something one day, and I said, it's amazing. The words that are coming out your mouth, I don't see the picture. I don't see the action. Show me the action, and then I'll believe the words that's coming out your mouth. I'm going to show you. That's all I'm on. Words come out your mouth. It's your actions. And your actions become your beliefs. See what I'm saying? It becomes that. Drop the mic right there, baby. <laughs> <laughs>